So after the video I did uh, last month's uh, uh, opening and quickly opening the box and quickly trying the Freewell ND, ND filter for the GoPro, I need to make an update after using uh, the filters actually in the field in real life uh, scenario. I will link the video in the description and at the end of this video and I also I will update uh, in the description of this former video with uh, the link to this one. So the following day after I just tried them in my garden, just you know a couple of uh, minutes and trying the different um, uh, strengths of the different filters, 16, 32, uh, etc. The following day I um, went to this little place uh, along the Delaware uh, Raritan River Canal and uh, I wanted to film the video I had planned to film. So that day it was cloudy at first, then very sunny, so I figured I could uh, use uh, the filters, the ND filters, so I can have my uh, 48th of a second shutter speed. So that day uh, in particular I used the 32 ND filter because it was very bright, even though it was cloudy then it was going to be very sunny, uh, like almost middle of the day uh, brightness. So I figured 32 was okay and according to my test the previous day 32 was kind of a, some of a sweet spot. So I used the filters, I mean I popped, in on, I popped it uh, on the GoPro and I decided to leave it as such. Just rotating the circular polarizer. And right away I found the problem, uh, unfortunately only when I was back home and I reviewed my footage of that day, usually uh, when I come back I just pop the, the footage in my computer and I just quickly review them. And the first video, I mean, the first clip I reviewed, the first one I had used the, the filter, uh, I noticed a problem right away. So I was using this filter, the ND filter, in combination of the 48th of a second shutter speed, which was the point of the filter. Otherwise, you leave the GoPro in auto and you don't bother about that. So I forced the 48th of a second. My exposure was fine because of the ND filter. So using the filter and the 48th of a second, I noticed right away that the stabilization uh, was off. There was a lot of artifacts uh, to a point that the footage was not usable anymore. So I scrolled down to all my footage and some of them were really bad. I couldn't use them any, any longer. It was like all artifacts, like you can see on this uh, sample that I put. I mean, I didn't use the, these parts on my video, or I just tried to hide it and cut before it was too bad. Uh, I was really disappointed at first. I said, maybe I did something wrong. I didn't use them the way I was supposed to. So I did some research. Apparently, it's kind of normal. I mean, you find very few information online about that. And uh, something that didn't occur to me was that the 40th of a second uh, is used to blur the movement. That's the point of the you know, cinematic footage because when you otherwise it's choppy, I mean, it's not pleasant to the eye, the eyes like some blurness, you know, when moving an arm like so, it has to be 40th of a second. So the movement is blurred and everything is like, tying together and it's like more uh, smooth. Whereas the stabilization is meant to unblur actually. So we have two opposite forces here at work. One is to blur the movement, 48th of a second, and the other one, stabilization, which is using a compu uh, computa computational um, algorithm, is meant to unblur and have like some kind of steady footage. I didn't occur to me, I didn't think about that when I was using those filters, like very gung-ho, didn't even think twice about that. So when I started using the filter, I didn't think about uh, these uh, two opposite forces because they don't mention them in most of the, in any of the videos actually. They, were, they talk about 40th of a second, that you need to do that to get more cinema cinematic, blah, blah, blah. But they don't mention the stabilization and I didn't think about that. 
So it's not a problem with those particular brands, the free well filters, and the filters, they are great. I mean, it's a general problem. Any filter would do the same because 40 years of a second on the GoPro works against uh, all the computer part that kind of stabilize the footage. So it's more when you use a GoPro with movement, like walking, running, riding, not so much uh, panning because usually I pan very slowly anyway, because it's more pleasant to the eyes. Uh, it's more cinematic anyway to pan really slowly. So I didn't notice anything or barely it's, it's usable, you usable. So fortunately, some of the footage I was panning a lot, so I'm always panning and not just walking. So I could salvage uh, most of what I filmed. I mean, at least for the purpose of my uh, video. So the couple of them I had to scrape was not too, too problematic for my uh, little movie. So that's good, fortunately. But most of the walking video, I had to scrape them because of the artifact that you can see on those footage and put some samples. Really, it's ugly to a point. It's almost more shaky as if it were like non-stabilized. So basically what happens after my some research and after what I noticed uh, reviewing my footage is that we lose the hy hyper smooth stabilization. So the two settings um, hyper smooth and 48 of a second work against each other and the footage look, looks horribly shaky and there are really a lot of artifacts you see those those three almost doubled or went thin and fat again there is a kind of flicker on, on some of the of the um, um, little um, shots sometimes it just flicker which is not the case when you don't use the filter. I mean, the, the stabilization on the GoPro is so great. You don't notice anything. So apparently after some research and uh, reading about all this, how the stabilization works, etc., when using those filter to force 1 48th of a second shutter speed, you would need to turn off stabilization and use a gimbal to, I mean, to recover some stabilization because no stabilization is not acceptable anymore. It's very, unpleasant to watch so if you turn off the stabilization you need to use a gimbal because the gimbal doesn't it's not a computer uh, it's not uh, uh, calculated the stabilization and if you don't want to use a gimbal you should use a tripod like a static shot uh, no movement and all of that kind of defeats the purpose of using the GoPro to begin with this is not a cinema camera, so it's a bit of a paradox to want cinematic looking footage, but we are all into that groove and wanting more cinematic because it looks more professional and also it's more pleasant. I mean, cinema has been around for a while and our eyes are trained to it and we are expecting good quality, uh, cinema quality, right? So we are all excited to say, oh, let's do the 48th of a second, but for the GoPro, it doesn't work like that. So I think the polarizer part is a useful part. So I'm glad I got the one with the polarizer in the end and not the other brand, because otherwise I would be kind of uh, really disappointed because they were less useful than I expected. But the polarizer got me and I am glad it got me. So I'm not too excited about those filters anymore. And I don't get why all the YouTubers say that it's absolutely necessary on the GoPro. So maybe when you film a waterfall, something like that, but on a tripod or with the GoPro like set fixed and not moving. So what I found actually is the more I use the GoPro, the more I find it's better to let it do its things, more or less, all in auto mode. The only thing I change is my frame rate and the definition 4K or else 24 um, shutter speed, not shutter speed, 24 frames per second or 60 if I need to do a slow-mo and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the field of view, stuff like that I can change, but the rest, uh, I let it be. And when you don't fumble too much, uh, that's where the GoPro shines actually. 
let it do its things because all the computational uh, stuff behind the scenes that makes it great and if you kind of try to do something else you counteract this uh, strength of the computational uh, videography actually. So I'm not too excited about those filters anymore. Uh, I'm less excited than I was at first. Before using them uh, the following day, I had reviewed actually my footage that I uh, quickly filmed in the garden. But uh, in the garden, I just span. I not, I never really worked with the, um, the camera and the filters on. Oh, no, that was a mistake. I should have uh, tried that. I didn't think about that. So I just pan around and panning is kind of okay. I mean, noticed a little bit if you look for it. But I mean, all in all, I mean, if you pan slowly enough, that's that's good. So I don't think I will use them systematically as I first uh, intended to. Leave one on at all times and one forty eighth of a second at all times. I'm glad I caught up. I caught the the problem right away on the first uh, time I used them, uh, so I didn't uh, mess up any more footage and uh, and I didn't use. Uh, I'm glad I didn't use this filter more extensively and ruin more footage. So basically, the um, circular polarizer part uh, though uh, seem uh, worthwhile. I'm glad I bought those, really, I'm glad I bought those one with the polarizer and not the one that don't have them. And on that particular video, I used the, the circular eye polarizer each time I was filming. So uh, my greens uh, are really green. They pop, uh, even though it was cloudy. So I, I guess it worked in some ways. So at least that aspect of the filter was useful uh, on that day. All in all, I think I will use those filter, the ND part of the filter uh, on specific occasion, like running water and stuff like that. And I will put the camera on the, on the tripod and it will stay static, not moving. In the end, I might buy just the polarizing um, one because I know that uh, Freewell has just, uh, you can buy uh, I, uh, one filter that's just a polarizing filter, no ND. That uh, I can put on the camera and leave it on in summer and uh, for really um, cloudy days. So I will use, certainly, I will try it. I will use that, those, uh, that polarizing filter when I uh, got one. And uh, I will not use the uh, ND systematically on the GoPro. Because losing stability is a no-no for me. Especially that Iceberg Smooth... Um, a stabilization which is really great especially on the GoPro 10 and uh, not using it defeats the purpose of using the GoPro to begin with I bought the 10 especially I upgraded to the 10 especially for that uh, super super smooth stabilization and I'm very happy with it it's a big improvement uh, with my previous one which was the 6 which was already really uh, well stabilized, but this one is like day and night, so I don't want to lose that. So I thought I needed to do a little update on my previous video so the viewer are not misled. Furthermore, I found a little um, uh, YouTube video and little information about that uh, specific issue. Either people that uh, film high action moving uh, um, videos, uh, do it without a filter so they don't run into the problems they just use the hyper smooth and they don't run into the problem or otherwise i know some people use a gimbal so that uh, solves the problem you remove the hyper smooth in that case just use the physical gimbal action and not the uh, computer computational uh, stabilization but for me uh, the gopro is just so uh, compact and the hyper smooth uh, it's excellent quality and i don't want to uh, need to use a gimbal i don't want the bulk of a gimbal uh, because it will defeat the purpose of the gopro to begin with if it gets too bulky i know that i won't use the, uh, the gopro as uh, often as i use it here it's so tiny can uh, put it in a pocket basically and i can use it all the time i can always carry it with me and use it in a vlog style. If I need to gimbal and blah, 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 and everything, I know I won't use it as much so that defeats a purpose. In that case, I can grab a bigger camera. 
so here you are that's my little update uh, i do hope you find this uh, clarification uh, useful and it, it uh, i hope it will help some uh, gopro user like me mm -hmm.